wait no longer. Greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I am your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Mr. Bad Bit, and it is here where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest, in all things PlayStation. Of course, you can listen to this show wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube at Bad Bit Games. And if you like what you hear, please consider dropping us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or if you really, really like us, and this week is my birthday week, so maybe, you know, I don't know, celebrate it the only way how, support us on Patreon at slash, or sorry, patreon.com slash badbit. And so with all that said, with all that out of the way, the greatest co-host whoever is, whoever will be, Mr. Kyle Stevenson, how are you, sir? It's been a crazy week. <laughs> it's been a crazy week indeed. I'm doing as good as I feel like we all can after what happened last night as we were recording on Wednesday. Yeah. Post, if you call that, and for audio listeners, in air quotes, a debate. It's it's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. What a crazy time we're living in. Oh but gosh. you know what, Kyle? Listen, I'm not going to let any of that craziness seep no. into my life right now. I can't have it. I won't nope. have it. Because mm-hmm. as of recording, I'm like three days away from my birthday. Yay! So there you go. Like It's my birthday on Sunday. It's I'm going to be 29. People Ooh. usually get really depressed on their birthday because, you know, mortality and such, but not me. Yeah. It's my, it's the ultimate treat yourself day. It's like, oh, yeah. no, I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to relax and I'm going to buy something expensive for myself as the oh, ultimate yeah. gift for me. You oh, know? Yeah. But Kyle, listen, we got a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. We're going to be talking about the, God, the Spider-Man remastered in its detail in all of its i don't know face swapping glory we're going to yeah. be talking about i'm hyped for hum talent you're hyped for hum talent i'm hyped for hum talent <laughs> we're gonna be talking about the playstation 5 pre-orders or sorry playstation 5 launch games pre-orders uh being detailed and being rolled out we're gonna be talking about yet again we have still not seen the playstation 5 ui and of course we're going to be talking about and tackling the cyberpunk 2077 studio responding to crunch culture claims but before we get into any of that kyle i want to talk to you about one thing but one thing only what you been playing? Kyle, have you been playing anything? Not much. So as we were, I, I don't know if we mentioned it last week, but we we're both kind of in a in a funk of not wanting to sit down and play a game. We'd rather do other things right now. So, I mean, I've hopped in and out of Tony Hawk here and there mm-hmm. and a couple rounds of Fall Guys, but nothing, nothing too crazy. However, I am excited that Crash 4 is coming out tomorrow. It is. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that lives up to what I I want to play right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll definitely be checking that out. So hopefully next week I'll give you some input on Crash. I'm really I'm still excited for Star Wars Squadrons, and I think that's like the one thing is like when I've just beaten a big game, like for example Marvel's Avengers, which. On the Patreon, we have a huge Road Rage episode about that game. But, like, after <laughs> correction, beating it, Correction. Not we. I. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, I, 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 I kind of want to just save myself for squadrons, get hyped for it. And that's the thing I'm going to be treating myself on, I oh, think. Yeah. But the one thing that the one issue, the reason why I haven't been able to play any games on PlayStation is because mm-hmm. I've had this external hard drive debacle. Uh, last week, all of a sudden, anytime I try to download a game onto my external drive, my PlayStation would just crash. It would just crash. My hard drive got corrupted because it's taken one too many falls. And I thought it was only the external drive. But nay, I tried to download, re-download just a game today. And even on my internal, uh, internal hard drive, nothing. So I am like 44 days in counting playstationless until the launch of the playstation 5 and it I'm makes you a think bump. what if what if sony just is sneaking that into some users playstations like hey <laughs> it's time the new thing's coming it's gonna die like right now <laughs> no no that's a really that's a that's an apple maneuver <laughs> that is that's an apple thing for sure we're just gonna kill your battery um <laughs> but so luckily we have an extra internal 
laying around. So we're going to be doing some open heart surgery on Friday so I can make sure I can at least play Star Wars Squadrons and maybe a watchdog uh, by the time those games come out. So I'm very excited. Hopefully I get this thing all sorted out. But yeah, with that said, before we square up the news, Kyle, I -hmm. would like... For a little Patreon pitch. Of course, we bring you the news each and every week. And like we say each and every week, if we ever gotten you through a long drive home, a tough day at work, this whole COVID situation would mean a great deal if you go over to patreon.com slash badbit and support us in any way you could. A dollar a day keeps the debtors at bay, is what I'd like to say. And it's my birthday week. So go ahead. I haven't heard that in a while. Have you said that every week? And I just... Zone no, it's like no. I usually just wing it because it's coming from the heart. Oh, I love it, but I yeah. I, I miss that phrase. A dollar a day <laughs> keeps the debtors so away. I like that a lot. Well, here's the thing: we've gotten really awesome equipment like these mics. We oh, got yeah. a green screen behind us. You just got a sneak preview into the secret project that hopefully by the end of the month we could reveal to everybody. It's a whole big ordeal that's going on. It's only because of your support over at Patreon.com. Slash bad bit. I'd like to thank our new patrons, Brenton Zachary and Aaron Ramos at the Bronze Plus tier. Thank you both so much. Our gold members, Chaotic Monkey, Ryan Grant, Gavin Gottfried, Griffin West, Robbie Bobby Miller himself, Corey Schofelder, Erica Scherer, Jose Jimenez. Thank you all. And our Silver Plus members, Pink Orc, Orcbot, uh, Marcus O'Neill, Ray Martinez, JB the Purple Monkey, and Tim Ulf himself. Thank you all again so much for coming out here and helping us through this whole COVID time. Y'all don't have to. It really means so much that you do. So thank you. And I cannot wait. We have so many surprises in store, Kyle. So many. And I I, I suck at secrets, Kyle. I (laughs) suck at them. But let's just say, by the time PlayStation 5 launches, everything changes. Everything. Can we we let everyone else know who are not patrons Uh what uh is going live this week for them? You mentioned Road to Greatness, but there's another thing that's going live. Yeah, so we have the Road to Greatness uh, that we covered, the Kingdoms of Amalur, we covered uh, Marvel's Avengers, and then Tony Hawk really just saved that episode. It's a really really good good episode. Really good. (laughs) Uh, And then we have the personal Patreon uh, podcast that will be coming out as this episode goes live. There's some laughs, there's some tears, and even Mama Bad Bit comes in. It's 2020 in a nutshell when it comes to, like, emotions. It's... (laughs) We get real. Uh, mm-hmm. It's real talk. Yep. Real, real. And uh, yeah, patrons get to a little live looking at our psyche, our current state of our psyche. In, in Spoiler alert. It's not, not great. Good. Especially it's, for me, it's not great. It's really, we're just, we're battling every day, you know? But hey. Well, I laugh because I cry. <laughs> if I don't laugh, I'm crying, Kyle. Exactly. It's time to square up the news with a new segment called Face Off. Kyle, let's get into this news. James Stevenson over at the PS blog writes, Marvel's Spider-Man remastered detailed. Beyond improved models and materials, one of the biggest things we have brought to the game is ray trace reflections and ambient shadows. We now have true reflections on the windows of buildings, and it looks stunning with our new skies and weather. But it's not just the environments. Our characters have also gotten a huge upgrade. From higher fidelity skin, eye, and teeth shaders, to individually rendered strands of hair, the new tech and detail brings our characters and their performances to new life. This does bring us to one of the bigger changes. In order to bring the best performances to players with our next generation Marvel Spider-Man games, we have recast the face of Peter Parker. Additionally, thanks to the power of the PS5 console, we're now able to offer a high frame rate through performance mode, which targets a 60 frames per second frame rate. We've taken full advantage of other next generation PlayStation features like near instant loading, spatial 3D audio on compatible headphones, and the revolutionary DualSense controller's haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. We've also brought new photo mode features to the game that we developed for Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. You can now place lights in the environment and change your spider suit after you've lined up your shot. Also, they gave us the amazing Spider-Man suit. Looks which, badass. Take those movies for what you will. That suit's great. It that actually suit's awesome. <laughs> amazing Spider-Man 2, that's one of my favorite suits. If the eyes moved, I think that might be perfect. Absolutely. Honestly, goodness. That said, Kyle, we talk, yeah. we've talk. we been talking the last few weeks about 
this remaster, right? Yeah. Like it not being upgradable from your PlayStation Four to your PlayStation Five, and I think we came down the ladder that this it, it, it sucks, it really does. But we kind of gave the caveat, and you kind of led the charge on this one. So if anybody else, it's all Kyle's fault. Um, <laughs> is that we need to see wh- what this remastered uh, Spider-Man looks like? Like if it really looks like they put the time, the energy into this remaster fine if they just you know up res it to true 4k and unlock the frames then mm-hmm. that's kind of shitty with that we've gotten a couple of frames uh we got a couple of screenshots from it um and then also like a, a two minute or a minute and a half like 60 fps like this is what the game looks like running on a five um my and takeaway, then a video of the new model and the new video of the new cinematic yeah my takeaway, Kyle, I want to hear yours, is yeah. this looks absolutely fan- fantastic. Like, this was yeah. a game, last week, I talked to you all about this. I was just like, I'm just going to buy the forty nine ninety nine version. I'm not going to mess with this remaster. Whatever. I'm just going to, I'm going to cheap out. I, I don't care. I'm probably not going back to this game. Mm-hmm. Seeing that remastered version, I'm going back to this game. This looks way too beautiful to pass up. Like, this truly looks next gen what what say you Kyle oh yeah I mean it is absolutely like jaw-droppingly gorgeous they they're like hey you want to talk about puddles you want to talk about puddles let's put reflections on everything you see in this game and for it to look so shiny and incredible the I the one screenshot that I absolutely love is Spidey swinging through the street yeah and you can see his reflection not only on the card to the left but also on the right and it's so it's so detailed it is we're in for a treat when it comes to to next gen because yeah. of ray tracing and, and the fact that it's these systems are able to handle it and like hdr i mean i don't know if it's true hdr i don't know the right. the actual technical stuff about it but if you can nail the lighting effects and everything like they did, it, like Insomniac has in these screenshots and the Entertainment Weekly stuff with the Miles Morales, dude, whew, whew. like, oh my god, like that screenshot that was the first screenshot I saw, and like just seeing how the the light is bouncing off his suit, seeing the ripples from his suit looked like again. Yeah. I, I get it, we're fanboying here, but let's, let's, yeah. let's <laughs> Spider Man is my favorite superhero. This looks amazing, and yeah, like the. the they're doing a really good job of like this is what ray tracing is and this is why it looks so great and so like seeing his reflection on even just when he's standing on the building and you're just seeing oh, yeah. his, the the reflection off of off of that mirror it looks fantastic i'm and excited the, to see the weather in action yes that's the, that's what i'm very excited to see in real talk Kyle uh, uh, if i'm lying i'm dying Kyle when i saw the amazing spider-man suit I actually just legitimately thought that was in the movie. Like that, they showed oh, yeah. me from the movie. Uh, it's not until you look deeper at it where you kind of see the video gamey imperfections, especially when you're looking at his shoulder. But like when you take a look at that, I literally had to do a side by side take of, yeah. of the two. It looks. I don't know who tweeted fantastic. it out, but someone did do a side by side of the movie and really? the game shot, and it's like. It took me a second to realize, <laughs> and you can clearly tell which one is the movie because of the real life skyscraper in the background. Mm-hmm. But man, at first glance, it is real close. Yeah, and maybe you know what you're right. I had I do have dumb dumb eyes, so like <laughs> I'm I'm just taking a look at this. This game, this remaster, looks like it has the effort in it. So like yeah. I don't really at this point I'm like all right you got me <laughs> I'm not proud of it <laughs> but I'm doing let, what every talk... gamer does complain and then give them my money afterwards <laughs> let's talk about the Nick Cage John Travolta in the room okay the the <laughs> the face off controversy <laughs> the the Hom Talent you animal that was amazing um yeah hob toblin so <laughs> which if you don't know why i'm saying that or why the internet is saying it is yeah. because the new model does look like tom holland it looks yes. like a younger peter parker yes and for some reason 
this is like the worst news you've heard today. I feel like <laughs> I feel uh, like some people already forgot what happened last yeah, night. Yeah, no, honestly, <laughs> maybe this is the thing we need to take our mind off things. You know what I mean? If That's this true. is what people need to be angry about, fine. You know what? You know what? Stand by and whatever. <laughs> Kyle, I'm taking a look at this face. All right. <laughs> we'll take a look at this face for a second, Kyle. Yeah, let's look at the face. Um, I'm going to be real with you for a sec. I think sure. I've said this on prior uh, episodes, but the original face always kind of looked a little weird, right? Yeah. Yuri's original Spider-Man face. There was always something a little off by it. So I was never purely a fan. And at the end of the day, I didn't mind it because nine times out of ten, he's wearing a mask. You know what I mean? He's playing. He's Spider-Man. He's, he's in the suit. I'm not. I don't care about the face. You know what I mean? So seeing this new face, to me gets rid of the stigma that a lot of video games have where like when you're staring at a video gamey face you're like that's a video game face there's something yeah uh, there's something not real about it i know whoever faced that face i apologize <laughs> but like there's always just yeah. something that's somewhat off about it proportionally and so seeing this new actor uh their face on on you know yuri's body this makes this looks more human to me sorry other person models face but like <laughs> this this new model that does look more like tom holland uh than that original you know uh peter parker face yeah. it looks really good to me so it, it took yeah. me a second i i paused for a sec but then i was just like nah this looks really yeah, good yeah i at, at first i was kind of with you i was like oh man it's not even just like a slight change it is yeah. pretty much like a like an overhaul and yeah is it shocking absolutely because we all have fond memories of the spider-man game in 2018 and and that was at that point the best peter parker with off of movies right yeah. like that that is the best version of peter parker so it was a little weird but then i saw the side by sides yeah and i'm like holy crap does that one look like the the old Peter just looked like straight up like a plastic Ken doll. Mm -hmm. There you it, go. There's there, there, there's just like no real definitions in the face and whatever. And this new one like it, it really blows me away. And not just the fact like they they retooled it and gave us a new model, but it was for a reason. Yeah, it's because this this actor's face and performance was easier to match Yuri's performance into the face. Right. So well, it wasn't you, just because they were tired of the aesthetics. It was just right. like it. Well, it do you fit think there better. was like some type of Hollywood ex explanation? Like the original model's face, like got a scar, and they're like, "Nope, you're <laughs> out." You know, like do you think there's something a little petty behind this move? Like, is I don't it just know. clearly matching the acting style of Yuri? Because there has to be, to, like, to some people who discredit it, they're just like, "This Peter looks too young. He looks like Miles could be his like, like the same age or like slightly." Older Does brother. he though? Does he look that young? No, he looks like a twenty-three-year-old to me, and that's what he is in the game. And so, like, yeah, that other Yuri looked like he was thirty-four and he had a kid. <laughs> so, like, yeah, for me, yeah, like, I think the face matches what I I would want out of out of Spider-Man. If that makes any sense, like this, yeah, it looks great. And the one thing I'd like to also say is that the shadows. That are like constantly bouncing off of his face onto the other surfaces. Whoa, you know, yeah. like just the the, gives the cinematic looks really great. Yeah, it gives him a lot of dim uh, dimension. And it is makes this it the for... only model that's going to get a, a redone? I know they say they've they've worked on the other character models, but Mile to has... this extent, yeah, Miles, Miles has sure. another uh, model uh, which nobody complained about, and then we could probably assume MJ. And I know okay. MJ in the original game got a lot of shit because that's not what a lot of people thought MJ should look like. And honestly, to a degree, yeah, that's not what I've pictured Mary Jane to look like because mm -hmm. what I've been shown over the past, you know, you know, few decades I've been around this earth. Right? So, yeah, yeah I, I could assume more remodels are on the way for probably the main cast. So if you mm -hmm. didn't like this remodel, buckle up. <laughs> you're, well, you're in because for a ride. the reason I asked that is because in that video where they're showing off the new Peter model, yeah, uh, Doctor Octavius is in there, yeah. and he didn't look changed all that no. much. No, yeah. So, 
wondering if if they 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 really did overhaul a bunch of the other ones. Also, for that scene, spoilers. Jeez, right? <laughs> <laughs> like you're showing me this. Okay, that's yeah. unexpected, but. Yeah, so I don't mind this face. It's so weird that we're talking about it, but the internet seems so upset about it. And uh, yeah, it looks absolutely fine. Overall, Kyle, you're excited for this remaster? And oh, if so, yeah. what, which which one are you playing first? Oh, I'm definitely playing Miles first. Um, mm-hmm. But I think after Miles, I will probably jump into the remastered. Because it's a brand new trophy list, and why yeah. not also get the platinum there? Uh, I'm wondering if they retooled that trophy list because that would be cool and not make do all those crimes oh, in every oh, single district. It. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could do so all like, kinds over again. I I know I can, Joe, <laughs> but do I want to? <laughs> now here's the thing. I gotta break the fourth wall for a sec. I feel bad because Jadis Von Metal did tweet at us oh. via at PS Trophy Room. I let him down here. He asked us, "What's your thoughts on the new Peter Parker?" Uh, I for one love the new look. It's insanely good. Weird to see so much disdain for it. And I'll just retool it so we can still use it. Mm-hmm. Why do you think there's so much disdain for it? Is it just simply this looks just, you know, like changes weird? Or is this like something more subconscious that I'm not picking up on? I feel like part of it is I feel like maybe some people are just tired of Tom Holland just being in everything How Spider-Man. Like, I feel like they not you, I mean, Tom, I'm, anybody who says that. I'm with you, but l- yeah. let me let me try to rephrase that and word it a little bit better. Like sure. they don't want, they want different versions of their favorite superhero. Okay. So the fact that it looks a little bit more more like Tom Holland in the movies, it makes the game a little different. Mm. So like you know, <laughs> I just had a weird thought, Joe. You, go for it. Usually I'm the one with weird <laughs> thoughts. You're on fire today. Let's do it. What if the old PS4 model? Is the Marvel's Avengers exclusive Spider-Man? <laughs> oh, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Well, well, I can't. I can't say like, well, what if that's the case? Because it's like, what you only had a month to map this person's face onto that body, but like, yeah, I, that That'd that does weird. make me that does make me scratch my head a little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah. there has to be another reason behind, other than like, because I mean, you're working on this game for years the, when you were doing the original. You're fine with this dude's face in the beginning. What's the thing that changed the direction? Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the only question that I have in my mind. But like for me, it's just like you're replacing one white dude's face with another. I got yeah. white dude face blindness. Y'all look alike to me. I can't tell. Yeah. Kyle, you Sorry. look like I don't know. You look like Smith, Kevin Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I thought of a last name first. <laughs> Yeah, you did. <laughs> and then I just said Kevin instead of Kyle. <laughs> you know what? If you were Kevin Smith, hey. damn, you look good. Thank you. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. So, yeah, I think people have so much disdain for it, <laughs> being an idiot, uh, because I think it's just something new and different, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah. Like, don't fix what's not broken type of thing? Yeah, I think it, – it, but I also think if you go back to the to the old days – People did have problems with the models. Like they didn't like they weren't beloved by any means, at least the way I'm thinking it. Yeah. So I don't know. That's just me. But with that, Kyle, there's a there's a pre order right. madness going on. Before we get into the pre order madness, yeah. Uh I'm trying to think of a a, a, a topic name for this. Uh mm-hmm. shoe segue, that's real bad. Um <laughs> if you were to take a game okay. and remaster it. And change a character model from any other game oh. in this fashion. Mm-hmm. Who who would you think you would want to retool how they look? That's a that's a really good question. Out of the games that are up for pre order that we're about to talk about, or no, or like like a general? PS4 game that we've already had, and retool um. somebody into this type of treatment and make them look a little bit different. Well, it's weird because like The Last of Us, like. Ellie has changed over time. I mean, remember mm-hmm. her original face model, right? Uh, it looked, yeah. Everybody's like, that's Ellen Page. They're yeah. like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I changed it up. Um, so, like, there's not... I, I mean, when I'm playing video games, I'm not like, oh, this person's fugly. You know what I mean? So, like, to me, it's... The face model's not the, the most important thing in the world. But... Maybe... I don't know. 
I got nothing. I I don't. I like. Is, yeah. there, is there someone's face? That you'd I, like I was I was trying to go through like the list of hmm. of PlayStation franchises and like God of War. I'm pretty happy with everyone that looks and got the way they look in God of War. Horizon. I'm pretty happy with everyone in there. Yeah. Bloodborne, you don't really see a face, right? Bloodborne, just pick a model. I need faces to actually move when when they talk. Or what about if, or maybe like retool a, a boss, make them look different. What are you gonna do? Make Father Gascoigne have like his face is already ooh, yikes, you know? <laughs> That's true. Actually, you know what? Make redo the the doll's face in Bloodborne. Make it less lifeless, so I am not freaked out by it. Oh, no. I got one. Okay. BB. BB. Give give BB a beard. Oh, okay. BBB. <laughs> Triple B. Dude. Bearded baby baby boy. <laughs> Are you doing the dude today, Kyle? I had one earlier, yes. Yeah, all right. So this is why you're all crazy and caffeined <laughs> out. Kyle, let's get into the next story, sir. Uh, Matt TM Kim from IGN writes, PS5 launch games pre-order details revealed. Bonuses for Demon Souls, Spider-Man, and Sackboy. Sony put up a bunch of PlayStation 5 games for digital pre-order and detailed some of the bonuses that will be handed out to early adopters. The PS5 games up for pre-order include Sackboy A Big Adventure, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, and Demon Souls. Here is what comes with the Sackboy A Big Adventure Digital Deluxe Edition. A digital art book showcasing the world of Sackboy, a digital soundtrack, four Sackboy costumes from different PlayStation games, Jin from Ghost of Tsushima, Sam Porter Bridges from Death Stranding, Connor from Detroit Become Human, and Deacon St. John... Deacon, wait, hold on. <laughs> Deacon St. John from Days Gone. That is not his last name, Matt T.M. Kim. Uh, just You're on future reference for you. Uh, four Sackboy emotes based on previously mentioned characters, and 20 Sackboy avatars. Here's what you get in the Marvel Spider-Man well, Miles Morales Standard I'm going to stop you right there Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> Stop me real fast. I was trying to find one of the comments. Did you see the Sackboy costumes? Oh, hell yeah, I did. Okay. They're all absolutely phenomenal and probably the reason why I'm actually going to buy this game. <laughs> I was on board I, with this game in the beginning. I was like, I'll get the cheap version. But Sony, hooking me in. What's your favorite like character? Uh, okay. I know wow. what yours is. Clearly, it's Jin. Clearly, it's Jin. Absolutely. And Jin is great. Jin little is little sack boy with a, with a samurai sword. Are you kidding me? I love Deacon St. John's version of sack boy. Ooh, really? Backwards hat and the beard and the motorcycle <laughs> jacket. Okay. It's pretty rad. But. Um, and I'm with you on this one. I'm also going to change my pre order. Yeah. Um, not just for the standard PS5, but I want to get the special edition for PS4 because I want that plushie. Jesus Christ, and that's the man. only way you can get it. It's the, only... is the PS4 version of the special edition. I really wish that they would just say, hey, special editions, like do the EA thing of just like, just buy the collectible. Here's the collectibles on sale. You know, here's the statue on sale. Sure. Mm-hmm. So you have to, have to like double, double dip on it. But here's the thing, right? Me and Wolf Jill, or Jilly rather, mm-hmm. on Twitter had a nice exchange. And she's a wonderful human being. And we talked, and she, she made me recognize this. Death Stranding, Sam Porter Bridges, enhance that picture. Yeah. Enhance again. I There's a little BB sack boy. Yeah, man. <laughs> they go all out. That is a deep cut, and I respect it. I love it. I love it. I, th- this is my favorite one so far. I'm sorry. Continue with the pre-order goodness. No, I'm with you. This is great. I'm very, very excited for Sackboy. Yeah. Uh, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales Standard or Ultimate Edition will get you the tracksuit DLC skin designed by Javier Garon, artist on the Miles Morales Spider-Man comic series, includes untrackable suit mod, a second Spidey suit, unannounced mystery DLC suit, a Gravity Well gadget, early unlock for the Gravity Well gadget that pulls enemies together and knocks them down, disarming them. Extra skill points, bonus points that can go towards new powers and abilities. Seems pretty pretty okay for a, for a pre order. Yeah, that would see, but I want to see what the the last the last suit is. What do you think That's it is? One. Yeah, you what want you me to read is? this last one? Oh, no, what I'll, do you think I'll, I is? I'll do it. Yeah, what do you think the DLC suit is? I just want to see the Into the Spider Verse skin. You know it's there. 
Is that why it's just a question mark? Dude, once they see right? it, I'm going to cry. Right? Just cry. <laughs> I'm with you on that tears. one. I think it's My 100% goodness. the Spider-Verse one. <sighs> um, and then the last one is Demon Souls Digital Deluxe Edition. Demon Souls is unique in that its digital deluxe edition comes with new armor and weapons that weren't in the original PlayStation 3 version of the game. Pre-order any version of Demon Souls and players will receive the new Reaper's Scythe weapon. Digital pre-order for the deluxe edition will also include Legendary Hero Soul, Renowned Warrior Soul, and Stories Warrior Soul, a Red Eye Knight Armor, Bulletarian Royalty Armor, Ritual Blade, Hoplite Shield, Ring of Longevity, Preservation Grains, Phosphorescent Grains, Bear Bug Grains, Large Hardstone Share, Moonlight Share, and the original soundtrack. Fans of the original PS3 version will note that the new items, like the Red Eye Knight Armor, are likely new drops from existing enemies. Hmm. That's a lot of stuff they're giving away the Demon Souls game. And I think the deluxe version is just like, here's really good armor so that you don't suck as bad, okay? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Todd Burwitz writes in, just like you can if you uh, follow us over at PS Trophy Room on Twitter or over at the Casa de Bad Bit Discord, and he asks, what games do you already have on pre-order? Which are you playing first, and will there be a live stream of the gameplay? These are great questions. With even better answers, Kyle, have you already what? What have you already ordered, sir? I have pre-ordered the Miles Morales Ultimate Edition. Okay. I have pre-ordered Sackboy, mm-hmm. and I pre-ordered Demon Souls. Ooh. Okay. I, I am thinking mm-hmm. of just pre-ordering Destruction All Stars just so I have the full launch lineup. I am surprised how little love that game's getting. Like it got a PS blog post today. I didn't but that's see that's pretty it. much it. Oh yeah. I I'll pull oh, that I'm up a bad I'll host. skim it. Yeah, nope, yeah. it's my bad. It's my bad. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll I'll talk. There was over. also a Sackboy one today as well. Yes, yeah, that's that's pretty much what we've covered here. So with that said, when it comes to the games that like I've already pre ordered, I have not pre ordered anything yet. I like to just wait. Like, I know I'm getting Spider-Man Miles Morales, so that one I'll probably pre-order over the weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. And Demon Souls. I'll probably pre-order when the day... When 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 the when it feels right. Because right now, I have a lot of stuff to trade in, so I'm just waiting on the massive trade-in bonus so that I could just get a PlayStation card so that I can make my journey into the digital future and just say goodbye to physical because I'm all about getting rid of the trash. So for me, I haven't pre-ordered anything yet, but the thing that I'm most excited for right now in terms of the, the launch lineup is 100% Demon Souls. Like, I'm all about the Demon Souls life. I've watched the... There's actually a um, a Digital Foundry tra- uh, trailer or a breakdown of the trailer showing that game running on the performance mode of 1440p, and 60 frames per second, and the game is running buttery smooth. It looks fantastic still. And there's also a 4K, probably 30 FPS mode that's going to give you all the ray tracing stuff as well. Mm. So I'm super excited for Demon's Souls. I, I will say real quick, because you yes. just mentioned the trade-in things before, because I also have the Destruction All-Stars post up that I can read through. Um, GameStop does have some deals right now for you. Um, you get you get a five dollar extra trade credit if you pre-order any PS5, Xbox Series X, or S software, which mm. it's not that big of a bump. But by October fourth, this is when these deals end, and I'm sure they'll pop up with other games. But you'll get twenty percent extra credit if you put it towards FIFA 21, Crash 4, Star Wars Squadrons, or Mario 3D All Stars. Mm. Well, that one probably doesn't work because that one game's already out. So yeah. either Squadrons or Crash 4. Okay, so maybe I'll go. Over you there get a tomorrow. little bit of a bump, yeah. yeah. So with that, since we don't know anything about Destruction All Stars, do you oh. want to? I don't want to read the whole entire. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip through it. I got All right, this. go for it. This comes from George Rule, uh, who is the community manager of Lucy Games, and it's over on the PS blog. Uh, Destruction All Stars is a global sports entertainment event where stars and cars collide, become one of sixteen different All Stars, and get behind the wheel to the sound of a roaring crowd as you 
wreck your way to the top. Can you master the mayhem? Jump into the arena solo or with your teammates and run to the vehicle of your choice. There's a variety of difficult vehicles with unique speed and handling characteristics. Whilst you might have a particular favorite, it takes a true all-star to master them all. While behind the wheel, you'll want to react to the match as it unf unfolds around you. Driving into opponent's vehicles will do plenty of damage, but a well-timed slam will annihilate them. Master using slam attacks to wreck, dodge, and boost your way through the competition. When wrecked, you'll have to master a whole new set of skills as you're thrust into the action from a different perspective. On foot, our, our all-stars might look vulnerable, but they have the athletic and heroic skills to evade opponents, take their vehicle, and cause maximum damage. The arenas have been designed to harness mobility and destructive action. Vehicles have enough track to navigate at maximum speed, while all-stars on foot can seek temporary safety in suspended platforms above using their parkour skills to jump, climb, grab, and vault. They can collect items and lure opponents into hard-hitting traps. And then they have like different character ability snapshots, some hero abilities. They got the all-star yeah. cast on the blog. Um, it sounds really awesome. Like It just... sounds like it's a ton of fun. Yeah. Okay. You, and here's the thing what we need to see, what we'll probably will see. We'll probably see gameplay, of course, down the line. Yeah. As, as the weeks build. This kind of gives me vibes of like Twisted Metal meets uh, Titanfall. Uh, where, sure. like, yeah, like you have the little people running on the ground trying to hijack, you know, um, each, yep. each uh, Titan unit. So, like, yeah, that sounds really cool. I just would love to see them embrace this game a little bit more. I get that you're trying to push, you know, Spooderman and Spooderman's huge, but give some love to, to some other folks out there. But again, mm -hmm. COVID's a thing. But uh, to answer Todd's other question is, uh, which game are you going to be playing first, Kyle? Oh, oh man. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be Astro's Playroom. Really? Already pre-installed. I will probably okay. check that out to get a feel of the dual sense. I know that's not the uh, not a sexy answer by any yeah. means, but like I'm I'm genuinely very excited about that game. I don't know how deep or big it is. It's probably not, mm. but it's going to be platforming and it's going to be cute and I'm excited. Yeah, I I think that's that's actually a great way to kind of like jump into the experience because like you want to you want. I feel like Astro's Playroom is that perfect, like, here's what this controller does. And I think mm -hmm. Astro uh, Rescue Mission was a perfect example of, like, this is what VR does. So, like, if anybody can do it, I think Japan Studios can. Absolutely. My thing, for me, I'm definitely going to play Spider-Man first. Mm -hmm. And then play a little Souls on the side. Mm -hmm. um, I'm November is going to hurt my wallet in so many different ways that I am not ready for. Yeah, but to answer Todd's last question is, will there be a live stream of the gameplay? Absa freaking lutely. Once I get my PlayStation Five, we're gonna have a whole bunch of live streams in November. Just me playing the games and hopefully y'all coming in. And that is part of maybe some of the more bigger stuff coming at the end of the month. Uh, so yeah, definitely there's gonna be some live streams over at twitch.tv slash PS Trophy Room. With that, Kyle. Let's talk about some data miners. Get your hard hats on. We're about to get a blue collar up in here. <laughs> I was instantly transported to the end of The Incredibles <laughs> with the underminer. Like, instantly. Whenever I hear data miners, that's where yeah. my mind goes. Uh, this comes from Zarmina Khan at PS Lifestyle. Data miners uncover PS5 features and backward compatibility info via PS Store source code. Remember source code? That was a good movie. Have you ever seen it? Is that with Shia LaBeouf? No, that's Jake Gyllenhaal, I believe. Oh, Jake Gyllenhaal, the Prince yeah, of Persia he keeps, himself. He, he, I think he dies over and over again to try to stop a terrorist on a oh, train. Oh, right. It's on a train. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it's you. It's pretty good. Uh, Sony might be dragging its feet when it comes to detailing the PlayStation 5, but data miners aren't ready to sit around and wait. Redditor K. Garvey and Reset Error user Tomari went through the PlayStation Store web version source code and found tidbits of information about the console's features and backward compatibility. Here's what K. Garvey found with regards to backwards compatibility for, in parentheses, verbatim. Quote, playing PS4 games on PS5, some functionalities available on PS4 may not be available. See www.playstation.com slash PS5 dash backwards dash compatibility for more details, end quote. Note, this is currently a dead link. 
Hmm. The second one was, quote, this PS4 game isn't supported with your PS5's current system software. We're continuing to make more PS4 games playable on PS5. Update your PS5 and then try playing the game, end quote. No. Sony has said that 99% of the PS4's library will be playable on the PS5. This suggests that the company might make games available on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is, quote, PS5 boost mode enabled, end quote. Boost mode, Kyle. Boost mode? Boost mode. Todd Akstra, this episode's all about the Todds, writes in, Why do you think we are still in the dark about so much with the PlayStation 5? Xbox is sending out systems for test drives, and meanwhile, we don't know, or we don't even know, what the PS5 UI looks like. Kyle, this is a question, right? Let's get our fanboy hats on. Let's kick let's kick some dirt in Xbox's eye or whatever. Why mm-hmm. is it that Xbox, like, PlayStation has been so guarded with information? And, like, Fabian uh, Winkler writes in as well, uh, what are your thoughts on Sony or when Sony will finally send out PS5 preview units to press and influencers? Do they do it before the release? Like these are two questions that kind of commingle with each other because why is PlayStation kind of holding back preview units for us and other media, <laughs> you know, other media folks out there? Is it because this console is huge and gigantic what's going on with the UI? Why haven't we seen it? Usually these things are little in the whole grand scheme of things. I don't care what the UI really looks like as long as the games are playing really great and Mm -hmm. it's not a muddled mess. But these are little issues that have kind of created this avalanche of us kind of being a little tense where Sony isn't being forthcoming with us. So Mm -hmm. why are we still in the dark, Kyle? It's a good question. I don't know. I know that I believe uh, Japanese influencers have gotten their hands on the system uh, around TGS. And I don't know when their stuff is, goes live, when they're allowed mm-hmm. to talk about it. But you got to imagine soon. Yeah. Um, Freaking Travis Scott has one. Which Who's is weird. Travis Scott? Why does he have that PlayStation 5 controller? I guess you. I guess you do a concert in Fortnite and I assume you just get a PS5. I heard you have um, to have sex with a Kardashian. That's that's anyway. been a joke. <laughs> I only know what's what's. I, there's a isn't there a Carly Jenner? <laughs> Carly Jenner. I don't think there's a Carly Jenner. No. What's the one that I hate? She's married to Kanye West, and I really Kim. Just, Kim. Oh, she's the worst. <sighs> what I do with her PlayStation Five though? I mean, <laughs> I do worse for less. You know. Oh my god. All right, I guess uh, so. But there, there yeah. are. They are being weirdly selective, and it's weird that again Travis Scott had got one. Um, I here's here's my thought, and I don't know if it's true at all because they're two different beasts entirely. But like when you saw throughout the summer game fest stuff where influencers got to play AC Valhalla and Watch Dogs, and then once they the event when they got to talk about it on Ubisoft Forward or something like that. Immediately afterwards, everyone was allowed to talk about what they played. Mm. So I'm wondering if they are slowly sending them out, and then we do get a state of play. And then immediately after, at the end of that, okay, and stay tuned for your favorite outlets as they get right. to now get to talk about. For the trophy their... room, because we've made a promise with them. <laughs> yes, please, Sony, <laughs> if you're listening. Hi. We would love to preview the PS5, yeah. please. Uh, but yeah, and then I we think we do have a podcast like, all about you, so it's kind of like the yeah. least you can do. You know, International Podcast Day is today. Come on, yeah. hundred plus episodes, seventy thousand downloads. Hit us up, PlayStation. Come on. What up? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I think we will get a state of play, and yeah. it will say, "Hey, go check out, go to your favorite outlets," as they mm-hmm. now get to talk about their experience with the PS5. And yeah. I think that would be a cool way to do it. Yeah, I would love to have like Digital Foundry break that de- break this down and make it you know, English for me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I would love to see, what is it? Austin Evans break this console down as well. Like I would love for someone going, yeah, this thing is huge as all hell, but it's silent as all hell. Like Mm -hmm. I would love to see people uh, talking about how this thing runs. 
that's the thing I'm really caring about at the end of the day. And I would like to see the UI as well, because I'd like to see what we're dealing with. You know, yep. there are some features that on Xbox really do intrigue me like that. Uh, was it that, that pause resume where you can have like five games running in the background and instantly Which, get into those let's, experiences. Let's be honest. That's a luxury. <laughs> That's not needed. If you were if you were hopping between five yeah. games at a time, you have a problem. I don't know how you do it. I yeah. can't even do two really. Yeah, I have to focus on one completely. But that's just me. If it works for you, great. But like, yeah. who who wants to have five games open at the same I time? I do, Kyle. I want to oh, just man. not even think about it. All right, you know what, every what time if, I what if somebody hop opens up one game at the start of Xbox Series X, like on launch day, mm-hmm. and then just keeps it open. For the entire console generation. And then on the last day, hops back. Will it still pick up? Yeah, probably. I don't know. Chunk I, Capri, I mean, that's, a, that's a test for you. Come on, let us Keep know. Keep one always running in the background. See what happens. I mean, even when it comes to, like, cloud saves, right? Like, mm-hmm. Xbox is like, it carries on with you. And it seems like the only generation divides we kind of believe in is if you're playing a game on PlayStation 4, like Yakuza right now, there's a huge kerfuffle about yeah. if you buy the PlayStation 4 version in November, because I think it comes in the States in November, the PlayStation 5 version will come out later in March, March because yeah. Xbox uh, paid for that timed exclusivity. So if you don't beat the game by March, none of that progress carries with you. Like, mm-hmm. not even through cloud save. So, mm-hmm. like, that's that's a very, like, man, weird. Give us, yeah, give us something here. Give us some. Yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is, like, even if it's bad news, rip the band aid off. Let me know. Because, honest to goodness, like, uh, all the backwards compatibility that Xbox has done has been fantastic. It's been amazing. They've truly gone the extra mile and made PlayStation look lazy in their approach when it actually isn't. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, let me just play Bloodborne. Sure, here, play Bloodborne. Cool. Uh, but Xbox is like, yeah, play, you know, D- uh, Dark Souls 3. But it's unlocked frames. Any game that has unlocked frames, it'll it'll allow it. So for me, just give us the details already. This is yeah. really cool that we've seen a lot about the games and such. Uh, but let's start talking about this console. I just paid four hundred bucks for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't yeah, know. for sure. Kyle, are you getting the Yakuza like a dragon? No. Okay. Uh uh, a confession time, I guess. I've not played a good one single minute of Yakuza. Every time, like, I'm sorry, my Xbox fans freak out. They're like, "Holy crap, we're getting Yakuza! This is huge!" Which like, is a huge deal. Is it first time on Xbox? It's a huge deal. Okay, that is a huge deal. It's a huge <laughs> franchise. It's just I'm one that doesn't speak to us. Okay, yeah, it's it's pretty. It's it's a big. I will defend that. It is a huge franchise. Joseph. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> You know, these guys in suits, they're yelling at each other, pointing fingers, doing karate. I don't stand for it. Oh, my God. Speaking about suits, let's talk about Nestle Crunch, shall we? Jordan Alleman from (laughs) IGN writes, Cyberpunk 2077 Studio Head responds to mandatory crunch reports. CD Projekt Redhead. Wait, hold on. Oh, there's... Okay. We got this. CD Projekt Red... (laughs) Head of studio, Adam Badowski, has responded to a Bloomberg report about mandatory crunch at the studio, saying the move was, quote, one of the hardest decisions I've had to make, end quote, but noting that Cyberpunk 2077's developers will be, quote, well compensated for every extra hour they put in, end quote. This follows a report yesterday which contained an email from Badowski sent to CD Projekt Red staff. The reported email says that the studio will be enacting mandatory six-day work weeks in the run-up to Cyberpunk 2077's November release after, quote, extending all other possible means of navigating the situation, end quote. CD Projekt Red had previously promised its employees that they wouldn't be forced to crunch on the game in an interview with Kotaku in 2019. But Dowski issued a statement in response to Bloomberg's reporting on Twitter, quote, These last six weeks are our final sprint on a project we've all spent much of our lives on, something we care for deeply. The majority of the team understands that push, especially in the light of the fact that we've just sent the game to CERT, and every day brings us visibly closer to shipping a game we want to be proud of. This is one of the hardest decisions I've had to make, but everyone is well compensated for every extra hour they put in. And like in recent years, 10% of the annual profit of our company, oh, excuse me, 
10% of the annual profit our company generates in 2020 will be split directly among the team. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. I like what Marcus O'Neill writes in here. Mm-hmm. He, he writes into us via the Casa de Badman Discord server and says this. Another week, another story about crunch in the video game industry. I think we can all agree that forcing people to work an absurd amount of hours for a long period of time is an unacceptable practice. But I am of the mind that not all crunch situations are created equal and, uh, and by definition, a bad thing. As with most things these days, I feel like we've lost all the nuance when it comes to conversations about crunch. I'm curious what you guys think is the right balance here. Should employees be asked to work overtime to finish a game? Should it should it only ever be optional? Is there ever a situation where you think a mandatory mandatory crunch is okay? And we've had this really great conversation, um, Gavs Goaty and uh, and Mister Nasty Boots talking about crunch. Like Nasty mm-hmm. Boots is a chef. He he works crazy hours a week you know, cooking up dishes, right? Flipping fish, making filet mignon. Um, you know, Gavs worked or uh, served in the military. Thank you for your service. And um and so they know and I and I and I have a buddy in the military, they work absurd hours uh um when when on duty. So like is this this problem isn't just in this industry. But is it and how big of an issue is it actually, Kyle? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I personally still think crunch is not okay. Mm-hmm. I do understand where people who work in their jobs and this is kind of normal. Mm-hmm. And I think back to uh, when I had Mitch from uh, Press YYZ on Best Friends Talk Funny, which is no longer, but he was talking, he works in the tech industry and he brought up the topic of crunch and and he was like, everyone that works in this field kind of knows what crunch is all about and we're okay with it because we want to make sure it's as good as it can possibly be. Right. We want to make sure it's flawless. So every time crunch comes up, I I think about what he told me and and I hear from other people like, Gav and uh, Mr. Nasty Boots talking about like they work insanely long hours and, and it's just kind of par for the course for the job. Mm-hmm. But I I just don't think that's healthy. And that that's right. that's me that's me who has never had a crunch all other than being a student in college and, and doing all nighters or whatever. Yeah. For doing ragers, a bro. job, <laughs> woo! <laughs> Writing they teacher binders, crazy Kyle, yeah. for twenty four hours, and then go teach the next day. I was up for forty eight hours once. Not fun. That's um, crazy. But yeah, I, it's it's hard for me to to you know tell these people like, hey, don't do it if they clearly have a history with it and they're okay with it. However, yeah, was it last year's CD Project Red said they weren't going to do it? That's what Jason Schreier said, and that's what like kind of like what what the what the creative director here is saying. Like, this is on me. This is this is my B guys. Like, this is. I mean, that is fair. That yeah. If that, if he if that director is apologizing for and that statement, I get it. And they're letting him know, like, hey, listen, we're we're compensating them. This that's great. Is, I yeah. do like to hear that for sure. Yeah. So like, I am I am of a few minds. So like, I am a child of Crunch. Like, my dad used to work six days a week she still sometimes does because he's a monster but like six days a week or even sometimes seven days a week like like on the seventh day he wouldn't rest he would just take a half day and Mm -hmm. um and so like i would have loved to have those experiences with my dad when i was a kid you know like him throwing a ball with me every now and again like i don't have those memories and that sucks but it was because for good reasons he was trying to provide but that constant waking up five o'clock in the morning coming home at six six days in a row like that takes a toll so it really does come down to look we get it i get it we've all had those situations where we have to go above and beyond we've had to crunch for a few days or a few weeks we've all worked retail it gets crazy i get it um 
there it, there is nuance to conversations. I think it, it's on the internet, especially times like these, we can't have those conversations. Um, so when it comes to crunch, is it solely evil? No, I don't think it's solely evil. I don't think it should be cast it away and never come back because what you're really what what you're really saying is hey we need to pour even more money into this project we need to make a bigger investment in this in this project that we've already made because something went off the rails it, whatever the case may be whether it was by fault of someone or just a complete accident or not just hitting goals um yeah sometimes you're gonna have to put that extra weight in but at the same exact time from what we understand as people looking outside in from this industry, we've been told from people like Jason Schreier, we're like, this is like, no, 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 no. They're, they're crunching for months. This is not just weeks. You know, there are people working 12 hours, six days, you know, yeah. it, or just seven days. People not even leaving their office. That's unhealthy. So there has to be a balance between, yes, I've worked 50 or 60 hours this week i did a little bit more than i was supposed to or heck did even 70 but it can't be the absolute norm that can't be like oh hey gang game's coming out in three months let's do this no there it is to an extent a fold on the management and i like how um you know adam has taken blame he's not trying to shift it to an extent um and is trying to work to make it better but yeah, I don't think it's the sole evil thing, and this is a, coming from a guy that's a that 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 sways very liberal. So, like for me, I'm just like, yeah, the corporation needs to make money at the end of the day. If we, if we solely want to pay these people more and make them work less hours, these games need to make insane buku amount of cash in order for that to actually be a reality. So. A lot of things when we're talking about crunch, a lot of it is like we want this utopian um, like system and it's just, it's not going to be that. We have to compromise somewhere. And I think that's what I think when it comes to nuance, I think the other thing we lose as well when we're having these conversations is a compromise, meeting somewhere in the middle. So like this seems like a, 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 a meet in the middle. It's like, hey gang, we got to work the, these six weeks. Here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to up your pay. And of course, we're going to give you a, a bonus at the end of the year. I think that's that's a good a, a, a good compromise. But Kyle, a lot of people are saying, should we should we delay this game? Should this game be delayed? Hmm. I mean, for my wallet and for time's sake, sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, yeah, I I'm okay with it being delayed um, on that front. I just feel like we're so close and they've already delayed it twice this twice year alone times, yeah i think you kind of want to hit that date i don't think you want to push it into a whole another year even though it's still the same fiscal year whatever yeah. I, I just feel like they need it out when they say it's out yeah, yeah. i'm kind of i'm kind of right there with you as well also i'm thinking of those bonuses because i bet some people that are like okay so after this project, I want to take my talents somewhere else or I want to create my own studio or whatever the case may be. Maybe they're like, Adam's a bit of a douche. Like they can take their talent somewhere else and not be penalized for it or not have to work, you know, 10 months at a place you really don't want to so that you get that bonus at the end of the year, whatever that works out. So to me, yeah, I think you want to get this game out as soon as possible. And yes, you've already delayed it multiple times. So let's finally get this game out work on it where, where where it needs to and yeah i think we have to have a nuanced conversation about crunch and also kind of understand that jason is coming at it through a bias and also yeah. that adam is coming at it through a bias that we kind of need more sources and more reporters reporting on this so that we have a clearer landscape of what we're talking about but it's video games so we rather yeah. really get upset about Peter Parker's face that people work 75 <laughs> hours a week. Apparently yeah. that's where we are, you know? So with that, Kyle, we have one more little story to, to talk about Andy snail mail and we're out of here. So let's do. Oh, oh you're up. skipping something. What, what's that? Skipping something. 
What's that? Need for Speed Payback and Vampire yeah, are yeah, your yeah. PS Plus games for October. There you go. This comes from the blog. Need for Speed Payback. Survive thrilling heist missions, partake in metal crunching car battles, perform dazzling set pieces, and more in this four wheeled action blockbuster. Set in the fictional corrupt gambler's paradise of Fortune Valley, choose from three different characters, each with their own unique skills, customize your rides, and take on an open world's worth of events as you seek revenge on those who wronged you. And vampire or vampire, I I forget which way is the actual way to say it. Life is Strange developer Don't Nod Entertainment challenges you to embrace the darkness with this 1918 set third-person action RPG with deep narrative choices. Play a doctor turned vampire ghosting through a London gripped by violence and fear. Use your supernatural abilities as well as man-made tools and weapons to fight or flee the forces of evil and vampire hunters. Save the city's populace or free or feed on them to become stronger, but giving in to your bloodlust can have grave consequences. Both games are available from Tuesday, October sixth until Monday, November second. Kyle, out of I... these two games, yeah, what ahead. are you most hyped for? I'm weirdly kind of hyped for both of them. Yeah, I've been be- I've been wanting to play a racer for a long time, mm-hmm. um, and payback always intrigued me because it had like that story element to it yeah um and vampire or, or vampire I'm, I'm sure it's vampire it, of course kyle it's vampire what are you even talking about um i i've heard great things about it and as a non-spooky game player mm-hmm. this seems like it'd be a good game to play in october oh like for hollow Z. <laughs> sure uh but i do want to point out something cool about this okay i don't know if playstation did this purposely Okay. But Need for Speed Payback yeah. was co-developed by Lucid Games. Really? Who was doing Destructing, Destruction All-Stars. Huh. They teamed up with Ghost Games. According to Lucid Games Wikipedia, they, they co-developed Payback. Wikipedia so wonder would never if, lie to if, me. Wondering if PlayStation's like, hey, yeah. here's what this studio can do. This is the kind of quality of game. But yeah, I like it. It's cool. It's a cool I month. Like it. I like the new graphic, too. It goes yeah. with the instant the the game collection thing they talked about. Yeah, okay, it, it looks really nice. We're starting to see the new marketing roll in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I'm definitely uh, doing Vampire because it just uh, I've he- heard that it's like it's a buggy game, but it's got a lot of charm to it. So I really want to see this game in action because I have no idea what it really plays like. So yeah. that's what I'm excited for. Mm-hmm. With that, Kyle. We come to Andrew House's snail mail. Now, each and every week, you can send in your questions over to us at, over at the Casa de Badbit Discord server or over on PS Trophy Room on Twitter. Please follow us there. I love the attention. With that said, you could also pen a letter to Andrew House. I sneak on over each and every week. I take some of his mail. And this week, we got three pieces of mail that have come in. First one comes from... Hide indoors. She asks, why do you think PlayStation has been holding off showing off the console? Ooh, again, another one of these. I like it. Uh, do you think they're just waiting to let Microsoft have its time, uh, its time first, only to swoop in later to take the headlines last? Or is there another reason they might be holding back on showing off the hardware? So this is me not realizing I put that question earlier before <laughs> in the show, but no big deal. Is there a reason as to, and I like what Hidden Doors asked, right? I mean, are they waiting to show Microsoft showing their hand and then them coming out there? Could that be a possibility that we haven't thought about? I mean, it goes along with the same thought process of them waiting for Microsoft to do price first. The game mm. of chicken that we just finally are, are done with. Yeah. This could be a secondary, not as important game of chicken going on of like, who's going to get the last word before release? Yeah, and I, I I think I'm right there with you and like COVID and stuff, right? Yeah. So like, you're trying to get all your ducks in a row, and I don't know, maybe listen, PlayStation Jim Ryan he ain't scared of one thing, but maybe they are kind of concerned about what Xbox's box is delivering this gen, and they kind of want to wait to see what they got, or maybe they don't want to fall on a big day for Xbox by accident and then get lost in the shuffle, vice Mm -hmm. versa. So Mm -hmm. I think Microsoft's showing all their hands first because they want to be out there first. They want to be forthcoming. Uh, And 
by them doing that, I think it makes uh, PlayStation look a little less transparent, and that's important to people. Yeah. Can I ask you a question now that Microsoft uh, Series X and S's are out in the world? Yeah. And you actually see them in a real person's house on their entertainment uh-huh. center. Uh huh. What are you feeling of the look of the Series X? Oh, I think, uh, you know, I think they're both really nice consoles. Like, I think the Xbox Series X is not as huge as we thought it would be, mm-hmm. um, but it is fat like I thought it would be. So it's a fat boy, but it looks it looks manageable. The Series S is actually the thing that impresses me the most. This thing is like a pamphlet that it's size tiny. of and and having having that power there and it being that digital only box, it looks really nice. In the beginning, yeah. I thought it was really ugly, but like now, yeah, the looks kind of grown on me. Just like the PlayStation Five, I think mm-hmm. that's a great looking console. And yeah. I just want to see how fat that thing is. Oh my fat. god! I the first thing I saw when I saw some of the Series Xs in people's entertainment centers laying down i was like oh my god that thing is so thick <laughs> and it looks so weird because so it just the front is like you got the the opening for the disc and then yeah. there's just so much real estate there yeah and it, it's very odd looking to me that and you can tell they're like hey no you need to like stand this up this is the way <laughs> we kind of want you to stand it up yeah the same thing with the ps5 and Spoiler alert, I don't have room to, to stand it upright. And so I'm real not- worried with how it's going to look laying flat. Life finds a way, Kyle. Life life, life does find a way. A way. Jiminy also found a way. I heard him. Oh, damn it. I was hoping you didn't <laughs> say anything. <laughs> I heard that little son of a if gun. If the noise gating works, you won't hear him at all. Ooh. Ooh. We'll see. It's going to take a week or two for us to figure that out. Let's yeah, be honest. Is. You know, I'm yeah, a big is. bozo when it comes to time. <laughs> uh, but, like, so you're digging the look of these consoles so far? Yeah, so far. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. And they look different enough than what we already had, so. Oh, shit. This is a PlayStation podcast. They're ugly and I hate them. Uh, Kyle, next question. <laughs> The most famous Seamus I've ever met in my entire life. You can write that down, pen it where you need to, keep it in your mind forever. Writes in. What's the first thing you're going? You're. What's the first thing you want to feel when you play on a Dual Sense controller? Well, that's an intimate question, Seamus. Yeah, man. I want Seamus to feel them is... triggers. I want to feel them triggers. I want to get triggered with these triggers. I want to okay. feel like if, like, let's just say I'm playing Kali. And I'm shooting. <laughs> I don't want to do the call, and I just lose it. Anyway, what like pulling down on the trigger, seeing if that actually impacts my competitiveness in Call of Duty. Like, will yeah. I go? Oh shit! I died because of the trigger on this stupid controller, or am I going to actually feel immersed when I'm going? Mm-hmm. Pew, 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 bang, 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 bang. For for shoot, me, shoot, shoot, shoot. Pew, bang, bang. I I just want to feel. What the grips feel like? Mm. Does it feel Does it feel secure in my hands? Yeah, is it gonna slip? Um, in game, mm-hmm. I'm just waiting to play a game with a bow. Yeah, I just I want to feel what a bow feels like because I don't know if I've said this on the show. I probably have. I love me a good bad. bow in a game. I yeah. love a good bow. Horizon, Tomb Raider, Far Cry Three. Just Woo! Love a good bow. So that's what I, that's what I'm waiting for is to feel the drawback and the tension as I draw back the the string. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, I'm 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 right there with you. A good bow in the game. You can't. You, there's nothing better. Mm-hmm. That said, the final question of the night comes from Nakachaka. They write in. Capcom said they're looking into releasing Resident Evil Village on PlayStation Four and Xbox One, but. At its first reveal back in June, it was announced as a next-gen exclusive. We all thought Spider-Man Miles Morales, Horizon uh, Forbidden West were PlayStation 5 exclusives, but now they're coming out to PS4. I'm not complaining since I'm not getting a PS5 at launch. Fake fan, Nagachaka, I'm only kidding, I love you. Uh, (laughs) But what will it take for first- and third-party developers to say goodbye to the PS4 and focus exclusivity on the next generation consoles. It's all about that install base. Yeah. They're just boy. waiting for they're just waiting for more consoles to get in people's hands and yeah. to make it worthwhile to just say goodbye, old consoles. It's only gonna be on 
current gen at that point, which would PS5, Xbox Series X. Yeah. Because it is, I think it'd be a little bit different if COVID wasn't a thing. Right. I feel like they would be more open to just doing next gen stuff because nobody would be uh, economically affected. Is that mm-hmm. the right way to say it? Sure. By, by a pandemic. Like, they would be more willing to upgrade to the next system, no questions asked, because yeah. of that. For for me, it definitely comes down to the install base. So, yeah, like, uh, there was an awesome article, I think, by DualShockers saying that, you know, the reason why PlayStation 4 is holding it back is because it's so huge of an install base. When you think about, you know, over 110 million consoles... That's a lot of people to consider that you may be leaving out. Yeah. And so when you're making a game, especially at, towards the launch of a next-gen console, you're kind of doing the math in terms of, well, what game am I putting as a sole exclusive and how am I going to make back that money? And I think that's what, like, you see some games like Phoenix, um, like, uh, what's it? Immortals Phoenix Rising. Like, mm-hmm. that's a smaller experience that, you know, it's a it's a small risk it could be a high reward or you're seeing something like demon souls where it's a sony exclusive this game is supposed to showcase the power of the playstation 5 and as to where Maz morales you need it on playstation 4 because that is the title that's going to make up for the loss of demon souls on ps5 right like that is that is the game that you 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 want to maximize your profit on because there's just so many PS4s and you know people are going to buy tens of millions of these of the copies of this game. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's always kind of like a, a a give and a take and some some games it works, some games it doesn't. But you're going to see for the first 2 years at least console or games being cross gen. It's mm-hmm. really not until mid generation of this of this console launch where you're going to see both of these consoles take advantage of that next gen tech. You really not, you yeah. know. So yeah, Nagashaka, you're probably a smart one about going. You know what? I'll wait until it drops. Yeah. Maybe make a smaller one. We're the dum dums. We're like, give me this, you know, reverse ice cream skin, which looking console. You know, the the crux of being an early adopter, a day one person. Yeah, like it it kills me every time. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm just oh my god, maybe this is like a topic for another day. But like, like all the games we're buying. That, like, that's another thing. Like, Little Big Planet, I'll be buying, but probably not day one. Probably sometime out in December mm. when I know I can get to that game. You know, because, okay. like, seeing, like, Spider Man, Demon Souls, Cyberpunk, um, you know, AC Valhalla, Call of Duty, like, there Watch are Dogs. S- Watch Dogs. Like, I want to get through Watch Dogs actually before the next gen oh, launches. That's true. that's true. But, like, there's so many Bug games Snacks. To play. I have to edit every episode. There it is. All right. It's, it's your Bloodborne. <laughs> it's my Bloodborne, baby. <laughs> I want that at the back of the box. I know we've made it in life. At the back of Bug Snacks, it's this is Kyle's Bloodborne PS trophy. <laughs> or sorry, the trophy. You know? Oh, my goodness. Kyle, that's been the show, man. It's been a good show. It's been a chill it show. It is. I'm, I'm trying to continue this this riff, riff here. Mm-hmm. Uh it will be 37 days until Bl- Bug Snacks releases into did, the hands of everyone. Wait, did they finally announce it? Oh, I assume it's on launch day. I'm okay. assuming it's on launch day. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. I, Way I, closer I, than your Bloodborne 2. <sighs> Just saying. Well, Whoops. I mean, I think to go back to Nagachaka's like, question, like, Bug Snacks is definitely a game that they're just like, put it on, on next gen because that install base is so thirsty for content. They'll probably buy, go out there and buy. I think that's also PS4. Is it also? I that's how much I care about this game. (laughs) You, (laughs) yeah, PS4 and PS5. Do they release a price? Uh, I don't think so. Not yet, at least. How much are you willing to pay for this piece of shit? I'm sorry. I mean, oh no, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me take all that back. It's a game that I'm going to. I just wanted to hurt you. I'm sorry. Any developers affected? Your game Young looks horses. great. I'm just teasing the, Kyle. This is where the disclaimer is. The yeah. views of Joe does not reflect the views of Kyle. <laughs> uh, I, w- I would easily pay 40 bucks for this game. Yeah. I, I, I can see it being 40 Okay. I don't think it'll be the the new standard 79 90, or not 79. Jesus. Six, 69. 69. 99. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, I think like 30 for the PS4, 40 for the PS5. Yeah. That evens itself out. With that said, this has been the trophy room. But before we go, I want to go to the bounty board. There's been so many reviews, and I'm losing track on what I've read this week to that last week. So now, for next week, I need to start making a system. Like, we've got <laughs> dozens of reviews over on every part of the world, it seems like. Great Britain, Canada. It's an exotic place. Um, so I think each and every week, what I'm going to do is one week it's going to be America, land of the free, home of the brave. And then other weeks we'll go international. So like we'll keep in inter- you know, trying. I'm trying to do it as best I can. There's been a lot. Sure. There's been a, a lot of support because here's the deal: we've been having this little uh, giveaway. If we get to 100 reviews on Apple Podcasts, guess what? We give away a free next gen game on us. And I've even sweetened the pot since we've hit that hundred f- threshold. 150 reviews. Guess what? I'm throwing a copy of Miles Morales. You know what? Let's get even crazier. It'll be the Whoa. deluxe edition as well. Whoa! So you get the remastered with the yeah. with the new Hom talent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the face. That face you get to wear. It. All right. Listen. All right. I, I I'm I'm trying my best to be the the, the man of the peoples. So 150. We can do it. We have how many days until the launch of the PlayStation 5? 30, 36, 37. That's, 36, we need 37. A, we need to average one and a half a day, almost. All right. So one person, we could coordinate this. One That's probably not the, the right math. So, like, don't yell One person, <laughs> write a review. Don't send it. Wait for the next day. And just <laughs> daisy chain it. Listen, it's my birthday, and I'll hang that over your head until the day I die. What? I don't know. October 4th is my birthday. I'll be turning 29. The best birthday present in the world. You head on over to Apple Podcasts. You rate the show five stars. You tell us why. And then you're entered to win free stuff. I'm losing money, gang. That's how crazy I am. All right? <sighs> Vindication. Anyway. <laughs> KGrim07 writes, The best five-star review. You have to do five-star. Or else I'm not even counting it, by the way. Cheesy Earthers Mom? I can't count it. Sorry. Can you imagine if Cheesy Earth's mom wins the prize? <laughs> I would... Here's your fucking code. <laughs> Type it out. I know I don't like the cursing, but I thank you for the code. <laughs> All right. They write the best. K Grim 07. Five stars. One of my top podcasts to listen to. Feels like I'm hanging around with my friends talking games, only that I'm I have to listen and can't talk back. L O L. You guys are awesome. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. That's what we always hang out to do. And this hey, week, no one says you can't talk back. You can always pause it, put sure. in your thoughts, and then yeah. and, and restart it again. Yeah. Come to the Casa yeah. de Babbit Discord server. Yeah. We talk all the time there. Be like, here's what here's what we have to say, and I always try to at least give you an emoji so that you know I've read it. Because I, I that that gives me anxiety. <laughs> if people are like, does Joe hate me? I'm like, oh, no, I don't. I'm just very busy, you know. When you said emoji in the way you just did, I was like, mm-hmm. MLG, what, is, what does MLG have to do with you <laughs> reading comments? <That's> Listen, <laughs> Lethal Terminus writes in, conversation done right, five stars. I have been listening to the Trophy Room podcast for a while now, and there isn't a week that goes by where I don't listen to this thought-provoking and down-to-earth podcast. I love this. I always feel that I'm right there with them just listening to two great people have an intelligent, realistic conversation about the brand they love. The hosts are among the most entertaining people I have ever listened to, and I know that the show will only improve and grow and get the attention it deserves. Hell yes. One day we'll get you on the show. Oh, can you imagine? One day. We'll could do a like, what if I was shoe with the shoe. Oh my goodness. Shoeception? And we can only do that if we get over a hundred reviews okay. on Apple Podcasts. Or yeah. what if shoe comes on the show? Okay. And before we can do that segment, he goes, Now hold on a second, guys. If I was shoe and he does the segment. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my head would explode. <laughs> I would, I would more than ever just love. To I would cry Andrew House on the show. Yes, that too. I would, would cry just... tears of joy if any of those things happen. Oh my! You'd be God. like, you've been doing what? What's this segment? I'm like, listen, I gotta come clean. You got me. 
Andy, I'm sorry. Your electricity bill is overdue by a couple months. That's on me. Or years at this point, you know? (laughs) And with that, that's been the reviews this week. Again, I'm going to try to get to as many as we can. But I want to make like this like a 20 minute, you know, topic. So I'm going to I'm going to try to pick pick all the ones I can and throw them in. You know what I mean? Cuz we we're becoming so popular. It's pretty it crazy. Is. With that how it's my birthday week. Um what did you get me for my birthday and let's get on out of here, shall we? Oh man, what did I get you? I don't know, man. I have to think about that one. Nothing yet. I was going to say, don't actually get me anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm going to, just to spite you. Um, but you know what I did get you? And I got the rest of the world? A new Twitter handle. You can follow me at Mr. K Step now on Twitter and on PSN. Uh, you could follow me over at kindanyc.com or at kindanyc where I do other podcasts. And if you don't get to listen to the personal patron, patron podcast thing this month, just know that I love you. And I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that makes it sound way more ominous. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> it's like, we'll I, just I just, tell, tell I, I, I love you all so very much, and your support means the world to me. It's like it's like it's like after the show, you're gonna be like, so I got this letter. Uh, there's gonna be an attempt on my life, and I don't know when it's gonna happen. They yeah. just say it's happening. And you you know, <laughs> actually, that's that's kind of real. I got a grand jury summon. So oh shit. Fingers crossed that I either am not called or I can get excused. Yep, yep. Or just I'm rip it in half much. and don't go, you know, do your non-civic duty. Hey, I can't wait to do the launch of PS5 in jail for not appearing. <laughs> <laughs> Live from his sale, Kyle Stevenson. <laughs> can they actually lock you up for that? I think it's a fine and like up to huh. a certain amount of time in jail, I think. Really? Yeah. Jail. Okay. Yeah. Me and Teardrop Jewels will be talking about PlayStation <laughs> news. <laughs> is this pre or post shiving? <laughs> this is mid shiving. Okay. <laughs> so what's your what's your thoughts on all this? <laughs> ah, disc or discless? Ah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Thinking of you doing hard time. It's sadly hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's just trying to hug the other inmates. No one's going for it. We don't. He doesn't get it. <laughs> Every time we go to hug someone, shiv. <laughs> He's too oh, nice. Yeah. We need to harden this boy up. <laughs> you can find me <laughs> over at Mr. Badbit on Twitter. You can find this show over on Twitter at PS Trophy Room. You find the show on Bad Bit Games on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Again, rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Wherever you get your RSS feeds, wherever you get your podcasts. And with all that said, and with all that out of the way, everybody, keep hunting and keep playing PlayStation.